How's everybody doing today in YouTube land? I just got back yesterday from the annual two-week invasion of South Korea. What people don't realize about South Korea is that every summer, and actually spring too for that matter, North Korea attempts yet another invasion of South Korea, and we have to spend our time repelling this invasion. So I spent two weeks dealing with that. I just got home yesterday, so I thought I'd do a fun video on showing you the equipment that we used, or at least I used, in this when, while repelling this invasion. It's, you know, the helmets, or I'm sorry, like the gear, uh, we'll call it like backpacks, poncho liners, etc. So, um, this is something you might find is fun, especially if you're curious what mil pe military people use. And you might be wondering, if you're in the U.S. military, why on earth, and what on earth is this? Well, that's the subject of this review. This is a Canadian, this is the CADPAT poncho liner or Canadian Disruptive Pattern. I got this poncho liner from a dealer on eBay three years ago. So for three years I've been using this. I've used it for camping, I've used it for Army, uh, like Army as in US Army training, whatever. And actually I like it. I actually I bought it because the price was okay and I like the green on it. It's so much better than say, ACU, okay, or the Universal Camo Pattern, which is the official name of this camo pattern. Now, just so you know, well, I shouldn't say just so you know, but you know, this is a very, this is copied after the USGI model. It's got tie down points, just like the USGI does. See, very similar model. It's a little bit bigger, and it's actually a little bit thicker. You can't see on camera, but this is a thicker material than the USGI. The USGI, or United States government issue one, like right here, you can almost see right through sometimes. It's a thin material. And I like this. This gives me a little bit better insulation and stuff, especially like in say chili, you know, of course when it's chilly, a little bit, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, heat insulation. The material of this is pretty much still nylon. It's almost an exact copy of the USGI one over there. And by the way, my room is a mess, my house is a mess, I got a lot of equipment I gotta reorganize and clean up and put away. So that's why you'll see debris on the floor and why I don't wanna show you this stuff. But, um, other, so something to keep in mind though, now even though I say this is the Canadian disruptive pattern, which means like Canadian military, as I found out later after I bought it, it's not really Canadian military, it's, what's this here? This is actually Parklands of, Parklands Canada. Proudly made in China. So it's a commercial item. What I found out was is that in Canada, supposedly, the ca the official military surplus cannot be sold outside of Canada. So there's a lot of rules and regulations. So if you're online and you see something like this, it's probably a commercial item, okay? Um, both sides are pretty much the same. You know, you got your two sides, tie-down points, all that stuff. Nothing really special there. Okay, but um, for your knowledge though, keep this in mind because a lot of people don't understand how they can't identify real military equipment versus say made in China stuff like I got back here. So Canada belongs to NATO, just like the United States. So what you should be looking for is what's called the NATO, the NSN or NATO stock number if you're from Europe or Canada, national stock number in America. So if you look here where it says 8405015472525, what is that, a 59, that's the stock number. So that should tell you, and you can look it up on Google and stuff, what the number is, and this helps you know that this is an authentic piece of equipment versus my Parklands Canada, which is not. Now I gotta say, um, the craftsmanship, there's a little like, it's a little uneven here and there, but as far as durability, this has held up well in the last three years. Like I said, I'm floating around. I'm looking for some like the flaws in the craftsmanship. Maybe I sold off that poncho that had that. <laughs> but anyway, this is a good piece of equipment. If you find the, if you're in Canada and you find Park this brand online, hey, it's I, I recommend it. Let me pull it out here. Let's get a little different perspective on one here. If you are in America and you find this on eBay and you want something that seems like surplus, it's good. Even though it's a commercial item, it is good quality. I'll be honest, I would consider this the same quality as this. 
it works fine. It's great. I really like it. And what I usually do when I'm in the barracks in like an open bay, and I'll try to link this video here, this photo here. I will put the USGI in the bottom. That's my base layer. Then I will put this one on top to serve as like my bed sheet. Because when we're in the barracks, like when we have to go to different camps and stuff, you've had like hundreds of Joes sleep in there. You don't know what's on the bed. So I like to have a base layer, which is that. And then I use this as the top layer. And of course, people ask questions like, man, where'd you get that from? Hey, what's that? Even though I've been using it for years. So anyway, that's just a quick look at the uh, Parklands Canada Canadian Disruptive Pattern Poncho Liner. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I look forward to your comments. Thank you very much.